second generation ranger who was brought up on the island. With no roads or vehicles, it has remained undeveloped for centuries. It was even a former leper colony until the 1960s. Living here is quite an experience. You get to be in touch with nature. I love it and I will stay in it for until I die. I've protected um, this part of Seychelles, so then my legacy to see, the coming generation to see that what the hard work that we have done to ensure that this area is being kept into its natural state. The conservation work is shared by the only other residents on the island. Global Vision International combines volunteering and ecotourism, helping to collect valuable census data on wildlife and ecology. This is the Aldabran giant tortoise. Um, we're here on Curious Island and we're going to find out a little bit about these guys today. Um, this is number 74 of our tortoises, um, about 127 that we've found so far on the island. They keep growing um, and growing with age um, and the oldest ones could potentially live to up to sort of 200 years old. I just think they're so charismatic, you know, they, they come up to you, um, they really, really do enjoy your attention and a good scratch um, and they've definitely got their own personalities as well. Giant tortoises are only found uh, naturally occurring here in the Seychelles and, and on the Galapagos Islands which is pretty much the other side of the world so uh, there's very few populations of them. To be able to work with you know such an iconic species and actually help the research and drive it forward is really interesting because although from the long-term studies in Aldabra we know um, a lot of basics about the individuals over there um, it's not necessarily applicable here We're finding out new things all the time, whether it's about nesting information or mating behaviour, um, growth rates, it all varies depending on where you are um, and the different climates, food sources that they have. So we're finding out a lot of new information all the time um, and hopefully we're going to be able to help protect these guys and, and uh, ensure they're hanging around for a little bit longer. So this is part of our tortoise nursery. Uh, we usually collect them uh, on an opportunistic level to protect them. And once they get uh, up to five, six years, usually big enough, we usually release them back into the wild. The tortoise census is just one of the research programs run by the volunteers. The coca de mer is a really um, unique plant species. They have the biggest nuts in the plant world. And they're only found on two islands, one being Curious here and then one on Pralin, which is just across the way. So what we're doing is we're trying to figure out just the population here. We don't know the basics no, about first the population. One. If you guys remember from your presentation, do you know what life stage this is? Juvenile. We teach the volunteers our methodology. And then once they have that down, we let them do it and we just help record and we help them um, measure also. So they're a huge part in us collecting all the information that we need. From one month to three month placements, the volunteers are immersed in island conservation, providing the time and resources to ensure the long term survival of its species. It's very rare to find any sort of environment in the world today that is pristine, but Seychelles is one of those places that is as close to, be, to being that way as you can, you can probably find. And there's a lot of uh, fauna and flora. It's not only endemic, but um, is, is, is extremely rare. So um, there is a need for conservation here. We have birds we don't know about. We have all sorts of things that are highly understudied, but are really important for understanding this island. So in the long run, there is a big picture, just like with everything else. Um, and you have to collect all that information along the way in order to get an idea of that big picture. This island, once you're here, you really learn to love it. It's incredible. And the worst thing that could happen is being developed or the habitats being destroyed. So you have to have that background, that baseline data in order to help protect it. That's all for this edition of Inside Africa. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and visit us online at cnn.com slash insideafrica. Until next week, I'm Sony Methu. 
Goodbye for now.